And you know, uh, when you talked about your book, Edge of Desire, so I have this question. Uh, um, I, I have read some parts of it and I, have, I know the whole journey of it, but I really wanted to ask you, so Edge of Desire is a very interesting book and it's about the struggles of a woman after the heinous crime that she goes through. So, you know, you're of course writing it from a perspective of a woman and, you know, uh, trying to make her the protagonist of and and the uh, the victim of such a crime. So what kind of research did you have to do for that book? Because it seems that the nuances, you know, were very interesting and the way you were able to portray the complexity of the human characters. What kind of research did you go through to be able to do that? Also, the entire book was written in first person in the voice of that character. So I guess... Um, for a few weeks, I, uh, you know, like a method actor does, he tries to live the life of a woman. So I think I tried to believe that I'm, I'm that character who has been wronged. It was difficult, but, uh, but in terms of getting into the mood of that character, that was the basic, um, uh, you know, change which I tried to bring about in my thought process. Apart from that, yes, I mean, I read up a lot about rape victims. I read up a lot about how uh, the cases keep pending in, in the conviction rate is low, the cases keep pending, and also about the rehabilitation of women. So women affected by this heinous crime. So all of that reading um, did give me an understanding of it. Also, I tried to rationalize crimes against women because unfortunately across centuries and across the globe, uh, wronging a woman not belonging to you has been a weapon, an absurd, obnoxious weapon which, which the powerful have always used against the weak. And it's not just confined to, you know, one part of the world. It's probably worse than other parts of the world. So yes, I mean, I read up a lot about it and um, I try to internalize the, the crisis which the protagonist may have gone through. And also it was triggered by two incidents which had happened in the country. One um, was a case in, in Orissa in 1998-99 when the wife of an IS officer had been similarly raped. And later the sequel, the quasi-sequel, which was the edge of um, power, was born out of um, the other incident in the Nirbhaya case which happened in 2012. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how all your characters in the book were, uh, you know, portrayed as inherently flawed. No one was perfect. Everyone had their problems and their, you know, positives and negatives. So that is something very interesting. That is something that you don't really see in fiction nowadays very easily that, you know, all the characters are humans. So I was about to ask you about this, that was it, you know, something derived from real life, but I think you've already... So it was based on... So that, the that's, I think that's another, uh, you know, peculiar writing style which I have imbibed because I haven't honestly I've never been a voracious reader. Voracious reader in the sense I I start reading a lot of books but I ha I don't have the discipline to complete many of them. So as a result you know uh, I guess I managed to complete 20 percent of the books which I've actually managed to which I actually start reading. So as a result of which I think I have imbibed the the good aspects of many different writers without, without really being in inspired by one of them. Also, that, is all, that has uh, made me rely upon my own style, which is, which is um, you know, my observation, which is, which is uh, um, kind of drawing upon the starkness from incidents which I see happening around me all the time. So that's, a, I think that's a style which I have uh, developed over the years. Yes, I think uh, that can be translated and seen in your other book, uh, Chief, When the Chief Fell in Love as well. You know, you've uh, written. It gives me a kick. It gives me a kick to actually, you know, keep the keep the readers guessing as to which characters are real and which are fictitious, and which parts of the book are uh, real and which tend to be fictitious. I think many <laughs> readers just keep guessing guessing that till the end of the book. So, um, Tuhin, I am really fascinated by the wide range of different genres in your books. I mean, you've been writing about different, different uh, types of topics. So tell us what is the thought process and how you're able to write about such diverse themes? See, I belong to a generation where we didn't grow up wanting to become authors. So we became authors by default. Fortunately, today, I, I'm sure you would find some people, some kids who would tell you we, we want to grow up and become writers. But in our generation, it was virtually unthinkable to say or assert that, okay, I want to grow up and become a writer. 
so for me writing or, or at least writing a book was a very accidental or a very serendipitous journey i was working on a story for a film script and you know film script has takes its own uh, sweet time and has its own uh, you know uh, destiny many a times most of the times the scripts that you develop uh, just don't happen for various reasons the actors don't fall in place or whatever so i converted one of the scripts which i had for a film into a book and that's how the first book was published in 2006 which uh, which was that thing called love and that went, went on to become a huge success at that point of time and that was one of the early books uh, in the new age and in publishing scenario which which had attained that level of success now for me writing had happened very serendipitously very accidentally for me the whole challenge was if i am to continue as an author do i really have it in you and the best way to test myself was to raise the bar with every book to try and experiment something new with every book and that's how i had committed to myself that the, my first five books would be very different from each other so the second one was a cricket thriller the third was a political thriller the fourth and fifth were you know uh, the fourth was a book called uh, the edge of desire which was a socio political thriller but largely it was the story of a woman who gets raped but then the rape changes her life in a way she would not have imagined and she goes on to become a top leader of the country and takes certain decisions which impacts the destiny of the nation the fifth was um, the sequel of that book a quasi sequel i would say it wasn't exactly a sequel the sixth was a parenting book probably the first uh, parenting book from a dad's point of view it's called daddy indian parenting book from a dad's point of view and finally the seventh was again something similar to my first book and the eighth was a kashmir book and in between also i also wrote a couple of books which were around development politics and which were uh, non fiction so i guess you know with every book i tried to raise the bar i tried to test my own ability to pull off a new genre and uh, that's uh, that is what the thought process was um to him from being an author to a content strategist and then to being a politician which role would you say for you has been the most rewarding and which has been the most challenging for you so like i said most authors are not just authors there are a lot of other um creative consulting assignments or you know commission writing assignments which many of us undertake so content strategist is a part of the overall uh, writing umbrella which uh, which um, which i you know uh, follow uh so i think uh, the political part is a journey which has followed the writing journey so these are two separate journeys but of course i mean after a two year break i'm ready with two new books which one of which will hopefully release in the first in the first quarter of next year and the second the second one around mid next year and uh, at this stage obviously i have tried to build up a convergence between my writing career and my political career and it also makes sense because you know instead of having scattered or different stand alone careers you need to synergize and converge the two into one so these are two very exciting books so uh, one is a is a espionage thriller international espionage thriller which takes into account the present geopolitical situation arising out of the pandemic and its implications in world politics and the second is a historical character which celebrates the legacy of a of an unknown or uh, you know of a freedom fighter who hasn't got his due that's what the books are around